Okay, this this is <laughs> one, two, three. Um, hello and good day. This is your boy Cool Zero here, and Cookie Cuckoo to you too for interrupting my recording. But I would like to mention that I do live in the Caribbean, so I will have background audio from birds, maybe crickets, roosters right in my yard. So yeah. They even walk around in the capital, much less like now. Anyways, this is my first review of a game ever. My first review was supposed to be Sekiro, but that would require a bit of more time and planning. Funny enough, this reset does not occur till I start my recording right now. Like this, that is crazy. Anyways, I'm not deleting this whatsoever. Um. A bit of insight on my background into a horror genre because this is the first time I've completed this game and completed something like it. So now with my background in horror survival horror, I did not grow up playing anything like the original Resident Evil games. I never had any chance to play these games till my teens. I'm 27 getting 28 now. By the time I started playing games, the PS3 was already coming out. Actually no, I think the PS3 was out already by the time I purchased my first PS2, which is my first console I owned. I completely skipped the Game Boy and such generations, although I did get one later. And then I discovered PC gaming later on, which allowed me to emulate old games. So that is to give you a perspective that... I did not grow up with these type of games. They were very foreign to me, and I decided eventually at some point I wanted to try them out. I saw Resident Evil 4 as my first introduction to survival horror. I thought that was how games were supposed to play. That is typically how these games go. So I did that. And then I saw my cousins play them. But I never did get a chance to play it like that back then. Then now, there is the fact that I didn't get access to games, so by the time I truly came into survival horror, it was only the past 2 three years now. I had already played Resident Evil 1 OG, I played Resident Evil 2, Resident Evil 4 OG, Resident Evil 4 Remake, Alan Wake, Dead Space 1 and 2. These were the type of games where I thought they were true survival horror, and you had to basically get through it by killing every enemy in your wake. Pun intended on Alan Wake's name. <laughs> I do enjoy that game. It was later on that I realized, compared to the OG Resident Evil trilogy or the OG Silent Hill games, of which I've never played a Silent Hill game, but I refuse to play them, but that's a whole entire topic for itself. Other than that, I thought Survival War was supposed to play like Resident Evil 4, so when I realized you could play this game, Resident Evil 1 HD Remaster, right? Which is a GameCube port, remaster port, by Shinji Mikami himself, of the original PlayStation title. When I realized you could play this game and you could f soft lock yourself by not having the knife in your inventory, running out of ammo, and you got a whole bunch of enemies to deal with. I was truly surprised, like what madman would create a game like this? It was utterly ridiculous to me at the time. Flash forward to present me now, I played the original... I played actually, like I said, I won't wake Dead Space and so on. And then I realized to myself, you know what? I'm tired of being able to kill every enemy in sight. I'm a little bit tired of having to run up and down, kill every enemy, and then know that it's possible. I want something deeper. I want something that makes you more desperate. So then I went on to and try Tormented Souls, actually. I got it on a good deal. It's a nice indie horror game. 
which I will be streaming it soon after this video comes out. Hopefully, if I don't end up playing Hell Divers 2. But I played Torrent Soul. And it gave me that tense feeling. You know, you had to solve real puzzles on like Alan Wake and Resident Evil 4. Or 5 and 6 for that matter didn't even have any puzzles. Or unlike Dead Space, which were pretty much the combat was the focus. I realized in um when I played Tormented Souls for the first time, there were certain enemies I had to leave alive. It did not make sense to kill every enemy. What I, I dodged what I could dodge, I killed what was an inconvenience, and I tried to figure out and work my way for the puzzles. Suffices to say I made it to the end and the final boss of that game, and didn't finish it for some reason. I think I'll leave that for a live stream. I did play it offline by myself. And now recently now I purchased Resident Evil 1 HD Remaster for 5 bucks. And yeah, I tried it out. I honestly I dreaded it. I thought I was gonna be in for I think I picked normal. I thought it was hard. The option that lets you that says you prefer your hikes like climbing like a mountain or something like that. I thought that was hard mode. Because all the other ones seemed easier. It's very easy, easy and normal, I think. Or hard mode. Anyways, I picked I picked the more difficult options because I am a Soulsborne player and I like to do this to test myself. See how well I do under pressure in these games. And boy oh boy did I have a blast. I streamed this game in one of my streams on my day off. It was 9 hours, almost 10. If I started any earlier, it would have probably gone in 11, 12 hours. Because genuinely, I honestly did not expect to enjoy this game so damn much. So let's start with presentation. At the beginning, you started with knowing that you are part of a special team called STARS. Alpha, Charlie Bravo, Bravo team. Some You are part of a group called STARS. Which is basically like the state special service or something like that. And you are sent to investigate these gruesome murders at a mansion in a place known as the Arkley Mountains. You get separated from your team, attacked by what looks like half-dead dogs, and then you're thrust into this mansion that you see here now, and you've got a chance to pick one of two characters, Jill Valentine or Chris Redfield. From what I see, there are variations to the enemies they fight, certain rooms they can or can't go in, or the order of things, depending on the character that you picked. As well as Jill Valentine has more inventory slots. I think Chris own cuts off at here, so he has six instead of eight. Chris starts off with a lighter, which he can use. Jill starts off with a lock pick to pick locks. Different things, you know. Which is something when I did play Resident Evil 2 remake, I cannot imagine why. They made Leon and Claire's playthrough except for certain guns they get so freaking identical compared to Jill and Chris's playthrough. Which really haggles my mind why they would do such a thing. Honestly, it, it makes no sense to me <laughs> whatsoever. But um moving on. You're part of this team, you enter the mansion, and you have to look around and figure stuff out. First and foremost, you cannot kill every enemy. That is utter nonsense to think or try to kill every enemy in the game, honestly. You just can't. So you have to figure out which enemies can be killed, and which enemies should be left alone, and you should try dodging them, honestly. Or else you're gonna end up in a real situation here. Like this one right here in this tight corridor, it's clearly the better option. To simply get rid of this guy once and for all because it's gonna be hard to dodge in such a tight space whereas if you're in a more open environment you're gonna want to get rid of them once and for all and then you have to figure out what resident evil puzzles now do not seem too too hard they're more like fit me puzzles they give you the piece and the solution you just have to figure out where they go and how they go as averse to certain games like Tormented Souls, 
which definitely outdid Resident Evil on its puzzle system. Maybe outdid it too much. Whereas, if you were stupid, you will not make it through too many of those puzzles. If you didn't go to school, study a certain subject, to know some geography, one particular puzzle is going to give you a headbanger. Because at no point do I see in the game does it actually tell you or emphasize that, well, you can go this or you can do this here. That's something you just have to know and figure out, honestly. <laughs> Let me just see how to do that, but Resident Evil has 50 puzzles. One thing I think about this game, Nails, is the atmosphere and the settings. This game came out a long time ago, but to me, graphics are the last thing on my list when I judge a game. I judge a game by its gameplay, its music, its story, voice, and characters, its world, then its graphics. So to me, you're not gonna hear me pinpoint how this looks like they could give it a PS5 upgrade, but not. To me, as long as the gameplay is good and the characters don't act retarded, that is pretty much all I need. But yeah, you start up with your pistol. It's got a few shots, and you can use it mostly. If you're lucky, you'll get a critical. If you are not lucky, you will expand a lot of bullets and take out the zombies. The thing you gotta understand is that zombies do not die immediately. They take a while to go down, depending on the gun you're using or how lucky you are, and they will more than often get back up unless you've blown off their head with a critical. Otherwise, typically they will be just fine. But you also have to. Oh shit. I really don't like when this happens. I'm recording this live. I'm on PS5, no PC or laptop, so it has to be done this way. Or you share factory and I'm not gonna record an hour video then voice over it. I'm, not, I'm just not gonna do that. Maybe I'll do that for a second row when I do a review someday. But yeah, you get a few guns. You get the pistol and the shotgun. You eventually get access to a one bullet, but almost one kill gun. I think the self-defense gun. Then you get a magnum later at some point. I think Jill gets the magnum from the other character, but Chris has to find one, and for Jill she can find two, which is basically double the ammo. You have to conserve ammo because unless you would be getting criticals on every single hit, you will never have enough ammo to finish off every enemy. Enemies will eventually get back up, and the only way to permanently kill some enemies, unless it's a headshot, is to burn their corpse, but you will never get enough kerosene to fully burn the corpses, so you have to choose which enemies are so dangerous that you will be willing to burn that corpse and make sure they never get back up if they pass you that way. It's a, honestly, it's a thing where you have to pick and choose your battle. Otherwise, you are essentially can't continue the game. If you think you can play this like The Evil Within or Resident Evil 4 or Dead Space or Alan Wake, you cannot kill every enemy. And that's pretty much it for there. I don't particularly have any issues with the games. I did enjoy it. Except like what you see now. I could have passed that enemy, but the issue I have with it is the fixed camera angles. I am not used to them, I did not grow up with them. So in a way, that is completely on me. But because I'm not used to it, it made the game essentially a kind of a nightmare at times. Because there were certain enemies I could knife. I could totally take the knife, it would take maybe 15-20 hits. But I could take the knife and essentially kill them with the knife, which would make things a lot better. But it, the constant switching of the camera angles, it is not particularly easy. Sometimes you'll be walking forward, the camera angles will switch to the point where you have should be looking back. And then that becomes an immediate issue right there. But that's just one, that is honestly the only current nitpick I have of the game, like right now. See this? 
I'm literally running back, holding back, then I have to stop, turn, switch, turn, stop again, and readjust how I'm holding the analog. Otherwise, I will be in this infinite loop, running backwards, forwards, due to the fixed camera angles, which is something, again, I did not grow up with, so... Yeah, it, this game does come with tank controls. It does come with tank controls. If you want for those who played the original version and they want to use the D-pad. And then when you do that now, you can play it like that. I am accustomed with analog, so that's what I play with. Again, the puzzles are not too hard at all, honestly. It's just a matter, I only got stuck on one puzzle because I simply... There was a door you didn't have to interact with till the end of the game. So I never realized I had to go there because I completely forgot that door existed to begin with. But other than that, I've had a smashing experience having to use my brain and struggle for the area and using your head instead of simply shooting through everything like it's an action game. It really tests your skills of how you play, how you manage your inventory and resources. You have to do a lot of backtracking in this game. That personally, offline if I'm playing for myself, I didn't mind. On the stream, I didn't want to bore <laughs> my viewers with constant backtracking. But yeah, it all depends on the individual. Strongly, I recommend this. I highly recommend this for anybody that wants to experience true survival horror. If you're not particularly a fan of horror, you prefer more action games where you have the opportunity to take out every enemy, this game is not going to be for you. Or at least play it on easy mode so that you don't have to worry about anything. I, there are some parts to this I wish carried over. Like for instance, they would, this game... An example would be Resident Evil 4. What if there was a fixed camera angle mode where it's fixed camera angles and they limit your ammo so you genuinely have to dodge and avoid enemies if you're gonna make it out alive or what if there's a mode now well yeah it could have two modes the standard action mode and the original survival mode which makes it more in line with the original first three games that would be quite interesting honestly if they did something like that but throughout the game, you are going to be tested, you are going to be tried. And if you aren't naturally intuitive about some of the puzzles, it may take you a fair bit. But when you understand the concept of how the puzzles work, it becomes less tedious and more about simply remembering where belongs what and where you haven't explored. See, now we got the lighter. The lighter is an item. For Jill, it takes up space for her to use it. Chris has it as it's just readily available for him. It takes up no space. But he can't pick locks, though. Anyways, that's been my first ever review for Resident Evil 1 HD Remaster. I highly recommend it. Honestly, especially if you see for dirt cheap, I do recommend getting it and get at least giving it a try. I think it deserves at least that much. But yeah, hope you all enjoy and have a good day.